Cupcar 2.0 is all about making the most visually immersive sim rig possible using 3D printing and CNC milling. Now when I first started this build, I told you guys that I didn't really have any experience with CNC milling and this was going to be a new opportunity. And today's the day I finally get to test the Gen Mitsu 3020 Pro Ultra. But I have an even bigger surprise. You see, there was a whole debacle with Sane Smart sending me the CNC machine, and I ended up with a second one. So in my garage right now is a second Gen Mitsu 3020 Pro Ultra, brand new in the box. And rather than taking it back, Sane Smart decided they wanted to do a giveaway for it. So later on in this video, I'm going to tell you guys how you can have the opportunity to win your own CNC machine. Now before we get too far into this video, I have one other really exciting update to share with you guys. And you may have already seen it because I blew it up all over social media because I was so excited. And I'm not sure how long it's going to last, so I'm trying to get it out there as quick as I possibly can. As one of my partners in the Cupcar 2.0 build, I can say that Sawbelt America makes some of the most premium sim racing rigs and seats that you'll find in the sim racing space. And they've decided to do something really special for TWE fans and offer an exclusive 10% discount that is literally only available here. In the description, you'll find an affiliate link, and then you can use promo code thirdwheel10 to get an additional 10% off anything at sawbeltamerica.com. Between that discount and the CNC machine giveaway, I'm starting to feel like Santa Claus doing Christmas in August, but it's time to build an immersive sim rig. Now before we can cut apart on the CNC machine, we're going to need a design. So I'm in Fusion 360 and I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of how to do the design and how to transfer it over to the CNC machine. Now I don't want to bore you guys with this, so I'm going to move kind of quickly. If you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. But when you load in, this is pretty much what Fusion is going to look like. I like to go to the top view and then we're going to create a sketch. And what I want to create is the base of the button plate that we're going to cut. So once I create the sketch, if I click the screen, you'll notice the menu option up here change and I can go to a two-point rectangle now the plate that we're going to use is it needs to be 125 millimeters tall and 85 millimeters wide so since we're working in increments of five the boxes should align perfectly so once you've created that rectangle you can finish sketch right click and go into extrude and the plate we're going to make is two millimeters thick so I'll set that to two millimeters and you'll see We've now got a two millimeter thick plate. Now this next step might not be necessary for you guys, but I created my whole dash in Blender. So I needed to make sure I can match up the file. So I'm gonna go in and grab the STL file for the housing plate. And I'm gonna get this aligned so that I know where to cut my holes. Now, as you guys can see, my STL files aligned with the plate that I wanna cut. So I'm gonna create another sketch. Then I'm gonna go up to the top and create center diameter circle. And I know from designing this that what I need is a about a 16.2 diameter circle. I want to go a little bigger than the 16 millimeters that the button requires just so that there's a little bit of play. It'll tighten up real nice so I'm not too worried about it. And I'm just going to create all 10 of those circles. Now you can see that I have the diameter set and there's circles covering each one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my STL file because I no longer need that. And I'm left with 10 circles for each of the buttons. Now before I click finish sketch, I'm going to hold shift and select all 10 of the circles. And then right click and go to extrude. Now I want them to go all the way through. So we're going to set that to two millimeters. And you can see here from the side view, they're not sticking up, but they do go all the way through to the bottom. So those are the holes that I'll need to cut when we go into the next part. As far as the design process, that's all there is to it. So now from this point, we need to create the G code. So I'm going to go over to manufacture and we're going to start by creating a new setup. When that pops up, you'll see all these options on the right hand side. We don't need to worry about selecting a machine. We do want to do milling. The orientation will be model orientation. For origin, we'll go with stock box point. These are all the standard options. And then we want to select the point. So this is basically telling the machine where to start cutting. So I want to start at the bottom left. I'm going to align the piece of carbon fiber and zero everything into this point. So all of the excess carbon fiber will be on the right side over here. And the machine will only need to make one vertical cut in order to get the plate to the right size. I've already 
purchased a piece of carbon fiber that was the right height. So I don't even need to worry about having to cut out the whole frame. I literally need to make one vertical cut, made it as simple as possible. Now the last step under setup is to click the model. So we're just gonna hit select, click on that. Then we could jump over to the stock tab. And this is where I'm gonna define how large the piece of carbon fiber we're cutting from is. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm set to fixed size box. Now the piece of carbon fiber is actually 150 millimeters wide. I wanna offset from the left so that basically it doesn't center it and doesn't have to cut the whole rectangle out. It only has to make this single cut right here. So you can see how well that aligns. So the shape is perfect for the piece of carbon fiber. And basically if you add this section over here to this section, that is exactly the size of the blank piece of carbon fiber I'm starting with. The depth is 125 millimeters from top to bottom. So is the piece that I need. So that part's perfect. Then I set the height to two millimeters. We don't need to round up to the nearest anything. So that's set to zero and everything's good on that end. So we're good to hit OK. And that's how we do the initial stock setup. Now we just need to tell it what to cut. So I'm going to go up here to 2D contour and it's going to give me a whole new menu. From this part, I don't really want to give you guys direction on how to set up your tool because depending on what material, what thickness, everything you guys are using, you're going to need different tooling. And ultimately, like you can go into chat GPT and figure out what's best and it'll actually give you what settings you need. I personally don't feel confident in giving that guidance. So I've already created the G code to cut this. I'm just showing you guys how I did it. So I just picked a random bit that should work. Then I'm gonna go over here to geometry and I wanna select all of the holes. So I'm gonna hold shift and add all the holes to the geometry. Actually, you don't even need to hold shift. You can just select them as I'm doing right here. And then we're gonna go into heights. So the retract is stock top, that's fine. I'm not worried about the retract heights because I'm not gonna put any clamps in the way of the movement. The height feed from top height is fine. That's all good. And then bottom height, this one I wanna set to model bottom. But for the offset, because I have a problem with it going all the way through, me personally, I'm gonna set it to minus 0.1 millimeter just to make sure it actually breaks through the bottom. Now over here in the passes tab, I don't really need to change a whole lot. I just need to go into multi depths and I'm gonna change this to 0.25 so that basically it's taking off a small amount at a time and doesn't try to cut all the way through in one pass. You're less likely to break a bit or have other issues. So that's a safe way to handle that and nothing to really change here in linking. So once I hit okay, I should have my first contour path. And if we run a simulation, hopefully with any luck, you'll be able to see the path that it's gonna follow all the way around to cut all the way through the holes. And it looks like it'll do so successfully. Now for the last step in prepping this, we need to cut out the actual rectangle. So I'm gonna go back into 2D contour. Everything stays the same there. I wanna select the edge that I wanna cut. Now, the way I designed this, it's not gonna let me just cut that edge. The tool is still gonna follow the whole path. So I'm gonna have to make sure I keep all my clamps out of the way. It's not gonna cut anything going around the edges, but it is gonna follow a full loop around every time for each layer. Beyond that, all of the other settings are gonna be exactly the same as cutting the circles. So you can just copy and paste basically. Actually, I take that back. There is one other thing you guys are gonna to wanna to add in. If you click on tabs under geometry, rectangle, three millimeters wide. I set it to a 0.5 millimeter height and a distance of 40 millimeters. Basically it's saying every 40 millimeters, it's gonna add a tab on the side here that it's 0.5 millimeters high. And that's just to keep the extra scrap from flying off once it's cutting or from having it break in a weird way. It'll keep everything in place. And then at the end, I can break the tabs off and then file it down and make it look nice. Aside from that, all other settings are exactly the same. So with that done, we can go ahead and simulate the next tool path and make sure that it follows the same path that we need it to. And as you can see, it's doing the cut. You can see where the tabs came in and everything's exactly right. So now we can go ahead and export the G-code. Now this part's relatively simple. We're just gonna go to setup three, go to post process. It's gonna bring up a menu. For the Jin Mitsu, I'm gonna use post GRBL. And then all I gotta do is give it a name. So we'll call it test CF, just so that I can share this with you guys. Decide where the file goes and post it. At this point, you have your NC file. And if you don't have an offline controller, you can use something like Candle or another software to send it over to the CNC machine. For me personally, I like to use the offline controller. So I just throw it on an SD card and move it over. 
So as you guys can tell, CNC milling is a little more complex than 3D printing, and I wanted to walk you through all of the steps to it, just so you guys had an idea of what you were getting into if you wanted to go this route. It's something that I'm really enjoying learning, but at the same time, it has been much more challenging. But this next part's relatively easy. Let's get the machine set up and run the code. All right, guys, so it's not good to cut carbon fiber inside the house. So we're gonna prep the machine, then I'm gonna take it outside. I wanna take my 2.4 millimeter bird bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and insert it in the collet and get that tightened in place. All I need to do to prep is get my bit put in and move my G-code over to the offline controller. I am gonna show you guys the clamping process as well. All right guys, the bit's in. Now I'm gonna place my carbon fiber and get it clamped down. As you guys can see, I got the bit swapped out and the carbon fiber clamped down, so it's time to move this party outside. All right, so everything's set up. It's on, and we're gonna go into the offline controller under prepare, and I'm gonna set the probe. You guys will see. It just got the Z axis zero. And with that done, I can go down and set zero X and Y. So we're gonna get it moved into position. Now I set my start point down on the bottom corner in the G code, so that's what I'm going with here. All right, now that that's set, go down to select project. You'll see CF button plate. Turn on the motor. All right, guys, it's done. So as you guys saw, the actual setup process for the machine itself isn't too complicated. It's more about getting the G-code right. And as you can see here, this is the finished product from the back. You can see how good the holes came out and kind of how it cut. I've already inserted it into the button box. You can see on the front here. Now I had originally planned for this to be the main button box on the rig, but once I got it on, the carbon fiber actually isn't authentic to the cup car. It's more black and honestly, the holes were a little bit too spaced. So I will be repurposing it for comm controls, but I think it's still gonna make a nice addition. I'll probably take it back out of the housing and build a different kind of housing for it, but Overall, it came out really good. Now I do have bigger projects planned for the CNC machine. Right now I have a 6.8 inch Vocor screen on its way to me and I plan on using the CNC machine to build a carbon fiber housing for it so that it looks nice and clean on the rig. It's not traditional cup car, but I think it's a good addition and it's gonna look really awesome on the rig. Now for those of you that have been waiting to find out how you can win your own CNC machine, let me break it down for you. First off, I am promoting the CNC machine giveaway. I do have it here at the house, but it's actually Sane Smart that's doing the giveaway and they'll be the ones selecting the winner. You'll have an opportunity to enter for this giveaway all the way up to September 7th, 2025. After that, no more entries. Now in order to enter, you need to go into the description and click on the affiliate link and go to Sane Smart's website. From there, all you've got to do is subscribe to Sane Smart's newsletter and you'll be officially entered into the giveaway. After September 7th, Saint Smart will choose the winner and we'll work together to get the CNC machine shipped out. You guys can go check the description for more details on the giveaway and the specific disclaimers for it. As for the Cup Car 2.0 build, things are a little bit fluid right now and I'm not entirely sure which project we're gonna be on next week because there's a couple things that may happen and I don't necessarily wanna give it away. You'll just have to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. But until then, I'll see you guys out on the track.